everyone. It's Dominic from the MS Guide. I'm here with my friend and sometimes co-collaborator, Scotty, who is Rebecca Scott. She's in Washington. Now, folks, we're here to talk about something which is not difficult, but really difficult to put your finger on, and that's mm -hmm. attitude. I, I've had MS 28 years, and I am fairly lightly touched compared to some people now how much of that is luck and how much that is interventions whether it's diet or drugs i'm not sure rebecca's had it for how long now 15 years 18 18 years yeah yep. you know and has i think it's fair to say not been as fortunate as me physically yeah definitely um mentally obviously i'm much more intact than you but physically that's not so hard so by the way that's a low bar <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I started walking with a cane about I don't know, seven or eight years into my diagnosis, and I've been walking with a rollator for about three now. So um, I think it's fair to say that MS can piss you off a lot. And oh, God, yes. I just want to say somebody said, oh, you're always so cheerful. And it's like, yeah, I'm not going to put my black moments up on camera. Well, a huge part of one's MS diagnosis, I think, is often, well, this won't kill you. You know, at least you're not going to die from this. So I, I don't think a lot about the end end. Um, and when I first was diagnosed, I did that like panicking about, oh my God, what if, what if I can't walk? What if this, what if that? Um, and then nothing happened. So I kind of was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm good. And then prognoses are very hard to come by in this disease because- well, I was you told when I was diagnosed, because I'm looking at it thinking, geez, this is, this is not looking great. Like you said, you know, will I be able to walk again, et cetera? And I said to the neurologist, so what should I do? And he replied, hmm, eat less red meat. And that was it. It was, it was, it was 1994, I think. And it was just out the door, eat less red meat. And you're thinking, oh, if I'm going to die, I'm going to have the nicest steak before I go. You know, it's just. And also, I think being a 24 year old male, I mean, you're pretty. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was particularly stupid, but I was certainly invincible. You know, nothing oh, yeah. was kill me. So nothing was going to stop me. But my brother and I, just jokingly sketched out designs for an all titanium full suspension wheelchair. Cause I thought, well, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go ripping up the trails. <laughs> <laughs> Choking on a piece of rare steak too. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Steak tartare and a big jump. Yeah. <laughs> and I, th so the thing that has helped me and that I hope will help other people is, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say balance, which of course is hard not to chuckle about because my balance is crap. But at the same time, like, yeah, spend some time thinking about, okay, well, what are potential eventual outcomes and how might I like to um, consider facing them? And let's think about what's happening now. What, can I do now that will bring me some joy, that will be fun, and that won't keep me in a constant state of navel gazing? And believe me, I mean, if you've read my blog, I navel gaze with the best of them. And it can't always be well, it can always be. We've met people who are always doom and gloom and sadness, but like there is more to life than physical ability. There is more to life than having a regular bathroom schedule, which I haven't had in years. Um, there is more to life than being completely articulate all the time and being clear headed all the time. Like there are so many other things that make each of us, us, and I, God, this is getting into like inspirational territory and I'm gagging a little to say it, but Where it's true. Did you true. go get my hippie beads? 
<laughs> yes, get your hippie <laughs> beans. We'll sing Kumbaya. I'll grab my tambourine. <laughs> but it's true. We are, I mean, we are both mired in the fact that we have this chronic illness that we carry around with us all the time, like a heavy, heavy weight. And there's a shit ton more to us. I I don't know if it's my naturally sunny disposition or what, but <laughs> but I just I think you know there's things you can change and there's things you can't. I hate the idea of becoming more disabled, but I you know when it happens, it happens. You can't unring that bell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I haven't suffered it in the same way that you have, but little things to me have happened, and you just think either I can obsess about them and go damn it, my life is ruined. You know, I used to be able to do X. I mean, I used to love riding motorbikes. Now with some of the eye problems, I'm perfectly fine in a car, but with the juddering ride on a motorbike and the, mm -hmm. and the quick head turning, uh, I'm a danger to others as well as myself. And you think that was a real wrench to have that taken, to admit to myself that this was actually probably not a great idea. I mean, it saved me a lot of money, it turns out. So I try to look on the bright side because motorbikes, mm -hmm. you might as well stand there and tear up 20 pound notes. And, um, you know, you always need something else for them uh, sure. or tires or whatever. So it's, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's looking on the bright side. It's not reading every study and reading every abstract and thinking this looks grim without thinking who wrote it? How many people did they look at? How advanced or not is the topic they're looking at? Why do they want to get published? Where's the money in this field? You know, any study on remyelination makes me look at really askance because I think if somebody cracks the remyelination nut, they're in for some big dollars. And so therefore, I really need to put my uh, BS sensors on full. It may be an interesting start, but it ain't like, oh my God, MS is cured and people keep coming up with cures. You've had it long enough. Have people suggested... Um, cures to you that they've read about oh god yes all the time it's the attitude i always say the first year with ms your brain's in a washing machine what the hell's happening da 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 mm -hmm. and then you know when you sort of start to become grounded or at least you get one foot on the ground and start to think i really need to stop this topsy-turvy i think you need to be sensible educate yourself without it i guess not be obsessive about anything. Mm -hmm. I know people that are obsessive about their MS and uh, I don't look down on them. I, I look at them and think, God, that looks like so much work. And I'm pretty lazy at the core, you know, and yeah. that just looks like terribly hard work. But the problem is you get anybody that gets niche with anything, whether it's diet or religion or health or whatever, when they drill down, they tend to get boringly. This is it. They, they, you know, the world becomes blacker and whiter. You know, it's more binary mm -hmm. for them. And then they, 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 they can't understand, which I think makes your own life difficult. If you, and it's hard to see it in yourself, which is why you need friends. I mean, I know it sees all the Americans have therapists, but in the, in, in, in the UK, I've just got a friend who says you're being an arse. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned friends because segue. So we met on Twitter. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago and then beforehand reading your cooking book ah so <laughs> when you were walking stick not rollator stage right right so um so yeah meeting you and the people with ms you have brought into my life um joining uh a MS support group, which was something I always like, was like, ooh, gross. That's Dr. Levitt's group. Yes, it? exactly. E-support health. We'll put a link in the um, yeah. in the comments at the bottom. Right. And it has been terrific. I now know this wonderful group of women in Canada and the US. Uh, we are all at different stages in our MS journeys, which is a phrase that always makes me gag a little, but that's fine. But you are um, you not an MS warrior? I am not an MS warrior, as we have said you're before. Not on a journey, dear. No, I'm, I'm not on a journey. <laughs> I'm just doing my thing. But um, having people to talk to about the experience and to talk to about like how much it sucks, and then the little wins that come along the way, and 
I mean, you and I laugh a lot about what is happening to each of us in life and in MS life. Like that, that anything that lightens that burden I was talking about before that I feel like I'm carrying all the time, I just bring in more. If you want to laugh with me about MS, follow me on Twitter, reach out. I'd be delighted to. Yeah, again, I'll put that in the bottom in the links. But as I mean, my brother early on just referred to me as a family raspberry. And I thought, what? And it turns out Cockney rhyming slang, raspberry ripple, cripple. And I became uh, just a family raspberry. And it's like, oh, here comes the soft fruit. And, you know, it's just but you know, it's not said with malice or anything. And it's mm -hmm. almost, you know, it, it's just acknowledging it. But you, I just think if you can't, you've got to be able to laugh at it. Because if you take everything like that so seriously, if you're triggered to take offense at everything, you know, these are people that actually love you, you know, and in my family, it's like, you mustn't mock the afflicted, well, apart from Dom. And, uh, you know, but it's just, it's friendly. You know, there's oh, and a hidden agenda with, with, and I don't get pissed off when people say things like, you're brave and stuff, because I think they have no idea. They're probably just trying to do what they think is the right thing, um, it may be dreadfully misguided, but it's not coming from a bad place in them. And yeah, you know what my favorite is? No one understands. This is a hidden illness. And I'm thinking the clues in the word hidden. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but, you know, it is, I think it's very easy to feel that the world's against you. Oh, absolutely. You know, and um, that's why I don't like personally long if I hang out with people with MS, it's because they're interesting and funny and different like you, you know, not because, you know, it, yeah, yay. And uh, Rusty's in the club. But um, <laughs> do you remember that cartoon? No. <laughs> oh, it was a fireside cartoon where Rusty, the dog, had gone across all the traffic and avoided it and got to the other side and all the dogs are suddenly going, Rusty's in the club. <laughs> Love it. And there was a flat dog on the road, you know, just for context. But yeah, Gary Larson, one of my favorite cartoonists. But back to MS. I mean, I just want people to know that it's down to you. Ultimately, I, I said to a friend, I said, you've got to understand nobody really cares about you like you care about you. People will say they do and do that, but you've got to sort out your own mental health in many cases as, as well as physical. But I mean, we're talking about attitude. If you can't sort out your mental health, you need to get professional help to help yeah. sort it out. Because Absolutely. I mean, back to Dr. Bosser, he said he almost always prescribes an antidepressant, which uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I haven't got, but I don't think I need. And well, and and I can jump in with I had never considered an antidepressant ever. Went to a new neurologist in November of this past year. And he said, I want to put you on an antidepressant. And I was like, you, what? What? Yeah, what? what? How did I come across to you? Right. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I usually pride myself on being entertaining and charming in the doctor's office. Oh, and oh yeah, yeah. Suave and debonair. <laughs> exactly. So he suggested an antidepressant. And he couched it in terms of, and it may help your energy. So I was like, Okay, I guess I'll give this a shot. As you cross your arms and go, all right, exactly. I'm all in. Fine. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been transformational, but it's changed things just a little bit. And it may not be the right choice for everyone, but I'm really glad he suggested it because it's it's given me a small extra boost, which again, that heavy weight, just a tiny bit lighter and I'll take it. But was this you doing the handstand when you logged on? Yes, precisely. Right, okay, yeah, I thought so, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, cause you never did and that. And you dance before. moves, all yeah. of it, yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's, no, I mean, it's, take it, but sometimes it also needs, I mean, like I said, I've got a friend who will say to me, Dominic, stop being a dick, mm -hmm. you know, and because, and I've known him since I was 15, I'm I'm quite a long way away from 50 now, but the fact is having a friend and, you know, I have other friends, you know, there's a couple of guys with MS, we've got a WhatsApp group and we sort of keep mm -hmm. each other, should we say, honest, but you know that if something happens serious, you can engage three, four other people, 
like that and they'll take it entirely seriously and try to give you their best help uh you know because everybody go, comes at things differently but you know the rest of the time we just goof off yeah which i mean and that's like our relationship too you know sometimes we talk about ms sometimes we talk about the channel so i think one of the big takeaways i hope people take away um is find your people that's it yeah it's a good way of putting it and and rely on them to to get you through the good stuff and the bad stuff and to say you're being an ass when you're being an ass yeah i mean i i need that because i'm a bit 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 dense and sometimes mm -hmm. it just helps mm -hmm. for somebody to go yeah and that i mean that's the other great thing about surrounding yourself with people yeah who are going through the same and entirely different things is that you you get context you get perspective um because when you when you get those reports from your mri there i i forget my my lesion burden is like a they call it a burden uh it is, may be being technical but it sounds ghastly yeah is over 20 like i wish somebody could rewrite these things so it's like congratulations you have you've finally broken through 15. exactly exactly like there should you're be coping price. with a lesion load that very few people do and look at you go well done you <laughs> i don't know but it's a uh, yeah i mean we talk about the sensitivity of communication with some doctors i mean somebody said their neurologist yeah, they were in hospital for an attack and they were diagnosed and the neurologist kind of mentioned over their shoulder as they left the, oh yeah you've got ms and they're like get your arse back here what did you say you know but it was just the neurologist i'm sure had no ill intent but mm -hmm. life-changing things so yeah it's very easy language but also you have to remember that most people are not trying to be mean most people are you know at, at best thoughtless you know, or at worst thoughtless, you know, and at best just misdirected. Yeah. And it makes your life easier if you, if you're not, what's well, the modern parlance, triggered by everything that, because it'll just upset you and you will get upset and pissed off. And yeah. remember folks, that takes a lot of work to be pissed off and angry and um, can't be good for your MS. So my advice is just in, in the words of um, that Garcia thing frozen, let it go. <laughs> I think that's a great thing to end on. Yeah, exactly. Let let it go. Will you sing that for us, please? I will not. On that note, Rebecca, your refusal to help other people with MS is disappointing me, but at least we tried. You know, next time, if you could warm up and sing a bit, I'd like that. But other than that, it was really cool for you to come on again. And okay. uh, I appreciate your time and effort. Stop. It's always good to talk to you. Bye, All everybody. Right. Cheers. Bye. Hi, it's Dominic again. Thanks for watching the video to the end. I really appreciate it. If you want to make a big difference to me and to you, then what you can do is you can click on the subscribe. You can ring the bell to be notified if you want. But if you click on the subscribe button, that tells YouTube that you like videos about this sort of thing and it will show you more. It also benefits me. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers. That would be awesome. I started this channel just over a year ago and it is by patient that's me i've had ms 28 years four patients that's you and it is funded completely out of my own pocket if you're feeling really generous and you like the content please use the patreon links below where you can also ask questions and interact with the channel and that would be absolutely awesome i'd be really grateful anyhow have a great day i look forward to making my next video and i hope you get something more from this Bye bye